sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O bleeding head so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, the power of death comes o'er you, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today um, we are are ramping up for what's taking place in Holy Week. We have the Gospel uh, from John today uh, in which Christ is seated at the Last Supper and he uh, calls out Judas, his betrayer, um, to go and do uh, what he has to do. And so as we uh, enter into this Mass, uh, we recognize that Judas did not do what he did alone as a betrayer, that we all have a share uh, in that whenever we sin. And so let us begin these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion, that we may merit to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow, in his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength. Yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. I will sing of your salvation. I will I sing, sing of your salvation. salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock, my refuge, O stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to them. So thought, some, thought that, some thought since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember when I was a, a kid and you'd go to school, this, this was through you know, all your academic career. For me, one of my biggest fears uh, was being in a classroom and, and being called on by the teacher, right? Like I just absolutely hated that. You know, they'd be up the board, they'd be doing something and they'd call out to somebody and you had to have the answer ready to go. What made that fear infinitely worse is if it happened when you weren't paying attention, right? So if you, if you were distracted, you were thinking about, you know, uh, you know a CYO basketball practice, or you're thinking about playing video games with your friends, or there was a cute girl a couple rows up, and you were paying attention to her, whatever it was that distracted you from class, if they called on you then, and you didn't even know what the question was, it was infinitely worse. And, uh, and I still remember, like, in high school that would happen, and you'd had to, you had to ask the question, you're like, what? <laughs> What are we talking about? You know, what, what's the question? And everyone would laugh, and it was kind of a funny thing, but I, I hated that moment. And I bring that up because I, I think we see this happen now a couple times in today's gospel, right? Like, and this happens all the time, really, with the poor apostles. They're, they're oftentimes not paying attention, right? They're, they're really not in the midst of what's going on. And, and I think of Judas, especially, because here we have Christ, and he's talking about being betrayed, by one of his apostles. And he even says very blatantly, it is the one of whom I hand the morsel to, right? Now, if you were paying attention at all, and, and Christ even motioned to you with this morsel, I wouldn't take it. <laughs> I would be like, it's not me, Lord. But Judas, Judas has to just be thinking about how is he going to betray Christ? Like he's caught up in this other dialogue that's going on, this, this other uh, um, um, adventure of his own where he's going to sell off Christ for these 30 pieces of silver. He's so caught up in that, he's not even paying attention at the Last Supper. And I have to imagine, for most of Judas's career, he's not paying attention. We even see this yesterday with the anointing of Jesus' feet and the nard, and Judas once again just kind of forgets that this is the Son of God that we're talking about. He's like, we should have sold the oil and given it to the poor. That's what should have happened. He just misses the boat completely. But it's not just Judas. Even Peter, who becomes our first pope, also isn't paying attention, right? We get to this whole dialogue, and, and Christ is saying to all of them, 
that all of them are going to leave him. They cannot follow where he is going. They're all going to abandon him. And Peter, again, he just, he just isn't thinking. He's not paying attention. And he just blurts out, well, I would die for you. Not really comprehending what that means. And of course, Christ puts it to him that he will deny him three times before the cock crows. So what does this mean for us then? It means we need to pay attention. It means that we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted by other things going on in the world or even in our own lives. Because that's what ends up happening, right? A lot of times when we don't pray, when we're not connected to God, when we, we, we are not sure where God is calling us to in our life, it's not because God is, is not talking to us or God is this distant thing that we've just lost a connection with. It's because we are distracted by other things and we're not listening. We're not paying attention. And so the trick for us then is to be like the beloved disciple in today's gospel. Now, we assume that's John. We're not 100% sure, but we think it's John the Apostle. And we need to be as close to Christ as we possibly can be. We need to recline on his chest to hear his heartbeat, to be one with him, to really unite ourselves to him, to pay attention to what he's teaching us. And of course, we do that best when we're at this altar, when we're celebrating this Mass, even from a distance. Because when we're connected to this, this sacrament, and we receive Jesus Christ into our body, blood, soul, and divinity as he wants us to have it, then we're paying attention. Then we can understand who Christ is and what he's teaching us. Of course, the lesson is always, he loves us even to his death. Amen. Amen. Let's now pray to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, the health of the sick, and the cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, God who raised Jesus from the dead and exalted him as Christ will surely listen to the prayers of those who are God's children. So let us pray for Pope Francis. May he be strengthened and guided by God's mercy and love as we enter into Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. For all who serve our church as bishops, pastors, counselors, and teachers, may they speak God's comforting, healing word to all of God's people. We pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, may we deepen our relationship with Christ by recognizing his face in the faces of our brothers and sisters in need. We pray to the Lord. For people around the world who struggle to provide enough food to meet their families' daily needs, that they may overcome the challenges of hunger and poverty, we pray to the Lord. For all preparing for the Easter sacraments and First Holy Eucharist, may they drink fully from the waters of life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who are serving in the military and their families who await their safe return, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick, the suffering, and their caregivers, especially all those suffering from COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died or who will die this day, that they may enjoy the great feast that awaits us in the kingdom of heaven when they will finally see our God face to face, let us pray to the Lord. And for all the needs and intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O oh God of eternal glory, 
You anointed Jesus, your servant, to bear our sins, to encourage the weary, to raise up and restore the fallen. Keep before our eyes the splendor of the paschal mystery of Christ, and by our sharing in the passion and resurrection, seal our lives with the victorious sign of his obedience and exaltation. We ask this through Christ, our liberator from sin, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those who make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those watching at home, I ask that you make an act of spiritual communion as we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament, with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Good shepherd, think